Ladies and gentlemen, come here. It's me again, Jimmy Cricket. Welcome to Radio 2's Comedy Hour. Now, in half an hour, you're in for another innings from my own cricket team. But first, come here. A classic episode of the hit 70s comedy series, Hello, Cheeky. Hello, Cheeky. Oh, and hello, Cheeky. Hello. Oh, oh. Buenos dias, Cheeky. Hello, Cheeky. Oh, well, hello, Cheeky. Hello. Hello. What a funny way to make a living. Here is John Junkin with this week's appeal. Come on, darling, get him off. <laughs> he's a lad, he's a lad. Is he? In that case, keep him on. Now... <laughs> Now, look here. Look where. That's nothing to boast about. <laughs> little poem, little poem. That's it. I've had enough. Lucky old you. The standards of this programme have got to improve. Oh, dear. He's back on the culture kick again. I've tried to appeal to your intellect. You'll never make it. I have tried to prove that culture can be fun. You'll never do it. So now, to ensure that the programme has its full intellectual quota, I have brought along my friend, Joan Bakewell. You'll never get out alive. Joan? John, he's actually got her. I didn't think there were that many green stamps in the world. <laughs> Good evening, and may I say at the outset that the first individual to do a Bakewell tart joke will get a specially shaped piece of antique ivory right up the hooter. <laughs> See what I mean? She's not rubbish. <laughs> well, now, Mr. Brooke Taylor, what is it you'd like me to do? Well, Joan, the BBC have given me this little chat show in which I try to improve the minds of some people in Putney. I have an aunt in Putney. Well, not all the people in Putney, Joan. <laughs> Unfortunately, due, due, or rather due, to a contractual mix-up, they've, uh, they've lumbered me with these two low comedians. Low comedians? <laughs> That's yes. a bit strong, coming from the man who gave the head of religious broadcasting a whoopee cushion for Christmas. <laughs> I, uh, I do try to fight against them, but there are two of them, and I had this bad leg when I was at school, you see. So I thought, if you came along, you could help instill the right note of genteel erudition. Delighted, but I do think, Tim, that any programme, however cerebral, can be improved by a leavening of humour. Um, tell me, Mr... Uh... Uh, Junkin. Oh, well, you can't help that. Um, uh, tell me, how do you see your function in this programme? He can't in those trousers. <laughs> And, uh, this is Fatty Cryer. Oh, well, life can't be all fun. Me and Fatty are slipping the odd joke and sketch and song. Jokes? What I thought we'd do, Joan, was start with the influence of Chaucer on English poetry. Chaucer, yes. I've always thought... What sort of jokes? Well, crossovers, one-liners, meanwhiles. Chaucer, as a major English poet... I've always seen him more as, as an innovator, a pioneer, a, a progenitor. What exactly is a meanwhile? Well, the easiest thing to do is show you. Won't that upset Mr. Brooke Taylor? Oh, don't worry about him. It'll be ours looking up progenitor. Why ours? <laughs> Meanwhile, on a British rail train, just past the man with the lapful of minestrone. <laughs> uh, steward, steward, could I have a seat for lunch? No, mate, it's either roast chicken or pie. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, which do you recommend? Well, I should have the pie. It tastes more like a seat than anything. Yeah. <laughs> heavens, that was quite fun. Uh, Joan, what were you saying about Chaucer being a Princess Risborough? Progenitor. <laughs> well, it's just up the road. Yes, Tim. Uh, what else did you say you did? Uh, a crossover, what are they? Well, uh, well, here's one. My wife's furious. I've had a hot water tank fitted. Why is she furious? She wants me to take it off in bed at night. <laughs> That's nice. We never had anything like that on late night lineup. We never had any jokes, apart from Philip Jenkinson. <laughs> Shakespeare owed a lot to Chaucer. And never paid a penny for it. How's that? You're learning, girl. Joan, I don't think... So. Tim, I would be delighted to discuss the aesthetic values of the early English poets. Ah, good, because Fletcher and Beaumont were, in a sense, also Princess Rispers. But can I do a crossover? <laughs> uh, Mr. Cryer, have, have you got a funny one? Well, his wife told you me... You wouldn't dare! <laughs> 
No, you're right, I wouldn't. <laughs> Would you care to try this one, Joan? Excuse me, miss. Want to buy a raffle ticket for the Chelsea pensioners? No, thank you. I've got nowhere to keep them if I win them. <laughs> oh, I like it. On the other hand, Francis Bacon was more than a Princess Risbray. He was a Stockton on Tees. Oh, knickers to Francis Bacon. <laughs> Miss Bacon! I'm beginning to enjoy this. All right, but they'll cost you 50 quid. I've got nowhere to keep them if I win them. I think this could be my métier. Well, we'd be delighted to have you, Joan, but this is a cooperative show. Métier? Is that anywhere near Manchester? <laughs> Tell you what, Joan, you sit down and watch us for a little while, and then if you think of anything, just feel free and join in. All right, can I sit down on this little round overstuffed thing? We'd rather you didn't. That's Dennis King. <laughs> Encyclopedia of the Air, letter V. Verse. A narrative form using such elements as metre, scansion and rhyme. Or verse, what a Jewish patient keeps getting. <laughs> and now... Here's one, here's one. I beg your pardon? I thought of one. Little poem, little poem. Does it have Chaucerian influences? Shut your face. Oh. <laughs> In autumn, the birds of the air can be seen on the telephone wires looking sweet, but they hate it each time Malcolm Muggridge phones up. His long words keep tickling their feet. <laughs> Is that all right? Marvellous. Oh, good. Miss Bakewell, you're shattering all my illusions. You don't stop interrupting me in mid-flow. I shall do the same to your teeth. <laughs> Joan, uh, Miss Bakewell, I appeal to you. Don't put money on it, Bubbles. You're... <laughs> And now, John Junkin, accompanied by the Dennis King Trio. Four men, five songs. Pick the bones out of that. I'll never forget the night that we met At the factory's annual dance I was blind to your faults as we did the last waltz and took a tram ride to romance As your ruby red lips ate rock salmon and chips And you dribbled some grease on my pants On the back seat with you It was heaven come true As we took a tram ride to romance I'm sure the world could hear my heart was singing Keeping time with the tram bell ringing Now I'm packing a case And I'm hiding my face And I'm catching a fast plane to France Cos I heard at the pub That you're now in the club Since we took that tram ride to Roma I'm sorry about that low-class rubbish, Miss Bakewell. I was going to bring along an Elizabethan song cycle. What happened? Somebody pinch your pump. What? <laughs> what? I think I'm falling in love with Joan Bakewell. Join the queue. And now we present our new panel game, Spot the Teeth. <laughs> And here is your hostess, Bubbles Bakewell. Good evening, or if you live in Norwich, rhubarb tart. What does that mean? We've never found out. Hello? Hello, this I'm a citizen of Norwich here. <laughs> and I'd like to complain. You, uh, you don't like the joke? No, I don't like Norwich. <laughs> oh, boy. I bet that's put me on the council's blacklist. <laughs> Get off! I'm sorry, Joan. Carry on. Spot the Teeth, our new game where we show our panel teeth loaned to us by celebrities and they have to guess who they belong to. Here is the first set of teeth. For those of you at home, we are showing a card. It's the Jack of Clubs, which is no use to you, but irritates the hell out of a lady in Bridlington. Now, first, Ainsley Smart, whose teeth do you think these are? Ah, uh, the, uh, the Huddersfield Coral Society? No, but you're getting warm. Why don't you take something off? All right, darling. I told you a hundred times that's not funny. <laughs> Ariadne Wheelbase? Either 
Petula Clark or someone connected with mining. Sorry, Ariadne. Silly cow. <laughs> Finally, Maximilian hat stand. They remind me of some teeth I once heard in a concert hall in Leningrad. Billy Dainty. <laughs> Well, well, our first challenge has beaten the panel. Will you come out, mystery celebrity, and introduce yourself? Now you finish making a new film. What's it called? Oh, of course, you'd like your teeth. Ah, thank you very much. And it has been a pleasure. And for us. And perhaps you'd like to tell us the name of your film again. Certainly. It was... <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for. But don't forget, next week, we'll be presenting Gum of the Month. So, from myself and the panel, it's... <laughs> You see, Miss Bakewell, I warned you, they're dragging you down to their level. Hello, Sailor. What? <laughs> you continue like this, you'll finish up on the Desert Connor show. <laughs> um, Miss Bakewell, we haven't met. I'm Dennis Semprini, eat your heart out, King. <laughs> um, you nearly sat on me just now. So <laughs> Sorry, I mistook you for a small poof. <laughs> Shut up. I wondered if you'd like to sing with me and my orchestra. Orchestra? I know those two. Tony, the Beast of Bournemouth, and Demon Don, the only musician to be arrested for smoking hair, Estora. <laughs> Miss Bakewell, this is a side of you of which I wotted not. Ah, oh, I've had my mad moments. Life isn't all Norman Sinjin Stevens. It can't be. Uh, I know how you feel. I sometimes have to get away from all this. I was once on going for a song, you know. Really? Yes, they said it was 19th century tin and worth 75p. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Tim, bringing her on lower in the tone of the programme. I'd go home and cry, but it's the wife's turn for the handkerchief. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Next week, to redress the balance, I have invited Hilda Baker along to discuss Chaucer and his attitude to red flannel knickers. <laughs> In order to lift tonight's programme back to its previous depths, here is a little-known recording of Mr. Mary Whitehouse singing with the end of me old cigar. <laughs> Every Saturday morning when the clock strikes half past ten, the ladies all assemble, just the ladies, not the men. In a tea shop name of Betty's, a better class of place, where the ladies eat their rock cakes with a smile upon their face. We do the rock cake rock, wearing a sensible frock. Everybody all around the block joins in and does the rock cake rock. Get a maid of honour or a scone with jam inside You can have a slice of ghetto Betty's donuts are her pride But the ladies love their rock cakes Cos a rock cake's got some soul Just add some bread and butter And it's really rock and roll They do the rock cake rock Wearing a sensible frock Everybody all around the block Joins in and does the rock cake rock Waitress, don't be such a pig with the jam, Mildred. <laughs> you hear about Madge and her husband? Oh. They're still together. <laughs> the fairy cake is freaky. Eccles cakes can blow your mind. Apple strudel with some fresh cream is the best buzz you can find. But ten thirty cheetah trippers have a really special jag. Rocking with the rock cakes is their very own tea bag. We do the rock cake rock. Wearing a sensible frock Everybody all around the block Joins in and does the rock cake rock Everybody all around the block Joins in and does the rock cake Rock cake rock Excuse me, Mr. Brooke Taylor. What is it, Bubbles? I 
think I owe you an apology. That's all right, brown eyes. I owe you all an apology. Mm -hmm. During that last song, I locked myself in my dressing room. Well, that shows a glimmer of sense. Watch it. I realised that comedy wasn't my métier. Which, incidentally, is nowhere near Manchester. <laughs> and although I love the feel of the variety world, what I did was unfeminine, undignified and unworthy of me. Well, I'm glad you've come to your senses. Yes, I've decided to devote my endeavours to an entirely different area. What's that? Mr. King, are you ready? One, two, three, and... Not a moment too soon, she was down to her second pullover. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile... Oh. Oh, as I live and breathe heavily. Meanwhile... Oh, it... It was you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the deck of a luxury liner, a perspiring passenger has just popped up to the poop, peeped in, and popped the purser a poser. Uh, excuse me, purser, where's the nearest gents? Port side, sir. I don't think I can last till we get there. <laughs> no. It, excuse me, can I have my money now? No, no, later. Well, can I have my skirt back? I can't go round wearing this meanwhile all day. You can't go yet. You're in our historical extravaganza. What's it about? Henry VIII and his six wives. Which one do I play? All of them. Oh, I'd be no good as Henry VIII. No, no, no. You, <laughs> you play all the wives. Well, I'm not playing them dressed in a meanwhile. Well, you can't have your skirt back. Tim's taken it. Thought it might fit the wife, that's all. Thought it might fit the wife, that's all. Of course you did, Tim. Yes. Now, take it off and give it back to Joan. <laughs> Thank you. Tudor England, the place, Hampton Court, the year 1500 and typing error. <laughs> it is a typical English spring day. In a room overlooking historical accuracy, the young King Henry... The young King Henry is playing on his virginals. It's not dirty. <laughs> Come in. Ah, oh, good morning, Mr. Disraeli. <laughs> Who wrote this rubbish? <laughs> Don't ask me, Bubbler. I didn't expect to be called for 300 years. <laughs> Get out. Want to buy a second that royal barge fell off the back of a lorry? <laughs> Get out. All right for razor blades. Wouldst I could find a follow-up to green sleeves? I wonder. I wonder if ye world is ready for ye song entitled You Can't Put Willie Where Willie Won't Go. <laughs> Probably not. They haven't had the potato yet. Your Majesty. Ah, Woolsey. Are my socks back from the laundrette? Yeah. <laughs> yes, my liege, here. Yeah. One of these is green and the other is red. I know, you've got another pair like that in London. <clears throat> oh, not, we've got nerve. To do it twice. There are two people craving an audience. Give them this one, they didn't like the last joke much. <laughs> one is a man named Crisp who is waiting for the discovery of the potato smith and the other... <laughs> and the other is a Spanish bint. Tell That's Crisp cool. to come back in a hundred years and let's have a look at the crumpet. Your Majesty. May I present Catherine of Aragon? Odds blood, I am in love once and forever. Foul Mouth Productions present The Six Wives of Henry VIII, or What Did He Do on Sunday, we ask. <laughs> Starring Henry Kissinger as Hampton Court, Lindsay DePaul as Henry VIII, Eric Morecambe as Fred the Human Otter, and introducing Joan Bakewell as the six wives, villagers, chorus, monks, and half a yeoman in the tower scene. A co-production in association with Hannigan's Trust Boutique. And uh, you, Spanish Kate, 
Take Henry by to be your lawful. I do. I now declare your king and crumpet. <laughs> Let the bells ring out. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. What's all that? Somebody sat on a record. Oh, God. Art happy, Kate? Happy? Your chest. A what? Chest. Look, jest. In Spain, J is pronounced... <laughs> <laughs> Barry, it's your line. Can't read my script. She's hooked all over my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Kate. Let us away to the maze to play kings and queens. Any chance of a game? No. <laughs> Who is that? Earl of Middlesex. <laughs> Kate and Henry were happy at first, but then they had a row coming out of the church. <laughs> By my halidom, who is that comely wench over there? That Henry is Han Boleyn, one of my ladies in waiting, and put her down while I'm talking to you. <laughs> that reminds me, Kate. I divorce you. What about His Holiness the Pope? I divorce him as well. <laughs> when you're hot, you're hot. Excuse me, Harry. Could I have a word? Disraeli, you back again? Yes, I come as an emissary from the Pope. <laughs> um, but surely you. I not... know, I know, but business is business. <laughs> Get out and tell them to bring me a glass of warm water. What for? I'm going to dissolve the monasteries. <laughs> Your Majesty, you can no longer toy with this young girl. Why not, Woolsey? It's my turn. <laughs> A fig for you, Woolsey. No, thanks. I take centipods. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> ah, Miss Boleyn, Miss Boleyn. Such a pretty little thing. Do you think she wrote White Christmas as well? <laughs> Marry me. Let the bell... No, don't bother. Art happy. Oh, Henry, Henry, I'm so happy. Happier than I was selling them oranges outside Drury Lane. That was Nell Gwynne, dear. That's right, I remember. My history book at school had two pages stuck together with a toffee. God. Oh. Mm. And, dearest, put your head through this hole. I wish to paint a portrait of you in a Victorian bathing costume. All right, Henry. April Fool. <laughs> Well done, Executioner. <laughs> we aim to please. <laughs> you again? Well, make a bob here, make a bob there. <laughs> Your Majesty. Ah, Woolsey, have I done the sock joke? Yes. Oh, hellfire. <laughs> Find me another wife. Hardly my bag, Your Majesty. But I do know this young lady, Jane Seymour. Just a friend, you understand? Ah, oh, Jane, will you marry me? She's not here, Your Majesty. I know, but we're pushed for time. Oh, by the way, I should warn you that Sir Thomas More has preached another sermon condemning your activities. Tell him to stop it, Woolsey. Right, Squire. Don't say any more, Thomas More. <laughs> Thank you, Woolsey. Thomas More, please. Off with his head. Don't say any more. <laughs> what a trooper that lad was. Prithee, Your Majesty, I am Jane Seymour. How are you feeling as the sketch is running over? Does she have any jokes? No. In that case, I'm not feeling too clever. Good girl. Oh. Here you are, Harry. This week's special offer. Quick funeral for this one, introduction to a French bird. I am Anne of Cleves, the mayoress of Flanders. The Flanders Mayor. It sounds better my way. <laughs> Marry me. May we? We may as soon as we're married. <laughs> ding dong, ding oh, ding shut ding. up. Anne, you have disappointed me. I wanted a son. I'm sorry, they only had the express and the mirror. <laughs> Get back in your horse box. I divorce you. Disraeli? Thank you. Ah, Woolsey. Woolsey, I grow old. You think you've got problems? I'm dead. <laughs> it's... It's only the centipods that keeps me going. Shut up. 
There is only a feeble flicker of life in the old joints. Oh, I don't know. That jazz club in Water Street is still swinging. <laughs> Your Majesty needs the company of a young woman. Uh. Would meet a young friend of my brother's from Purley, who once featured in a limerick. But I won't go into that. <laughs> Come in, my dear. Hello. I'm Wolsey's brother from Purley. Uh, this part wasn't actually written in, but I haven't had much to do lately. Uh, have you done the sock joke? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, I'll be off then. Um, here's my friend. I'm getting rather confused. Which one I'm supposed to be now? Howard. Oh, him? Oh, all right, I'll try. Ladies and gentlemen, Francis here. <laughs> Titter ye not. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Wilt? Yes. Ding. Art? Yes. In here. All right. Doesn't time pass when you're enjoying yourself? <laughs> Henry, Henry! What are you doing with your life? Five wives. Two topped ones, snuffed it, and two divorced. What of it, pray? Well, even for a king, that's going it a bit for one morning. <laughs> here, Woolsey, my business is dropping off. Your private life is your own concern. <laughs> oh. No. I mean, I've had no trade from the king since he married this Catherine Parr. What's happened? Nothing. They're still together. See, there they are in the banqueting hall. He hasn't ordered a divorce or execution or anything. Why not? He can't get a word in edgeways. Will you wipe those egg stains off your beard and stop throwing those chicken bones on the floor, which reminds me, when are you going on a diet, you great fat? And stop burping when I'm talking to you and another thing. ta -da, cheeky. Bye-bye, Cheeky. This programme was written and performed by John Junkin, Tim Brooke Taylor and Barry Cry, with their special guest, Joan Bakewell. The music was played by the Dennis King Trio, and the programme was produced by Bob Oliver Rogers. <laughs>